Hello and welcome to To Suno by Sneha. This story is a special story about Bhim Rao Ambedkar. It's called The Boy Who Asked Why. It's written by Soumya Rajendran and pictures are by Satvik Gade. Thwack! The stumps went flying. Palwankar Balu had won the match for his team. They rushed towards him to celebrate. He was their hero. Balu was Bhim's hero too. Like Bhim, he was an untouchable. Until just a few years ago, his team wouldn't even eat with him. But this didn't stop Balu from becoming a great cricketer. As a child, Bhim knew that the world he lived in was like a ladder. Different groups of people made the different steps of the ladder. Bhim knew that he belonged to the lowest step. People above his group on the ladder did not eat with them. They did not drink water from the same well as them or bathe in the same pond. They did not in fact pray in the same temples. They said people like Bhim could not even be touched. As he grew up, Bhim began to understand that these groups were called castes. That there were high castes and low castes. Bhim was a mahar. He belonged to a low caste, an untouchable caste. Why? he asked. Even when he was little, Bhim had big ideas. He wanted to study, he wanted to read books. When can I go to school? He pestered his parents. His father, Ramji, sighed. He was an officer in the army under the British who ruled India and had managed to send all his children to school. Bhim was the last of his 14 children. Bhim's mother, Bhima Bai, knew why her husband was sad. She was too. They both knew how he would be treated in school. At the age of five, Bhim went to school just like his brothers and sisters before him. And like them, he could not sit with the rest of the class. He had to sit in a corner with a few others like him, the untouchables. Bhim knew the rules already. He had to sit on a gunny sack that he brought from home. He couldn't touch anything in the school. The teachers wouldn't touch his slate. If he wanted water, the school peon would pour it down into his hands so that even the water pot did not touch him. If the peon didn't come to school, he and other untouchable children like him would have no water to drink the whole day. But none of this stopped Bhim from going to school. There was one teacher, Mahadev Ambedkar, who was very fond of Bhim. He belonged to a high caste at the top of the ladder. He shared his lunch with Bhim sometimes. He even changed Bhim's surname to his own in the school records. So from then on, Bhim Rao Ambavedkar became Bhim Rao Ambedkar. One summer, when he was nine years old, Bhim, his brother and cousins were going to visit his father in Goregaon. Just the four children, alone by train. Bhim was very excited. Bhim's father had told them to go to get off the train at Masur. He would send someone to pick them up. But when the children reached the station, there was nobody waiting for them. Ramji had not received their letter telling them when they would reach. The station master came up to them smiling. Such nice children, he thought. So well dressed, so polite. You must be high caste children, he told them. No, said Bhim, we are Mahars. The station master's smile disappeared. Untouchable children, 
he wanted nothing to do with them. Finally, the children set off for Goregaon in a cart. The cart driver wouldn't drive the cart sitting with them. He walked alongside and the children drove the cart themselves. It was a long ride. By night, the children were tired and very very thirsty. But nobody gave them water or shelter, not to untouchables. By the time they reached Goregaon, all the joy of the trip was gone. They were exhausted, hungry, tired, and sad. Bhim never forgot that journey. When Ramji moved with his family from their village in Maharashtra to Bombay, he put Bhim in one of the best schools in the city. All of them lived in one room on a crowded, noisy street. Bhim's father would wake him up at two in the morning every day, so that he could do his homework and study when everything was quiet. Even in the big city, Bhim was treated as an untouchable. After school, Bhim went to college. He did so well that he won a scholarship to study in America. There, he discovered that he could go where he wanted, sit anywhere, drink and eat from the same cups and plates as others around him. For the first time, no one thought he was an untouchable. Bhim came back to India. At his first job, the peons in the office threw files and papers at him because they didn't want to touch him. Nobody would take orders from him because he was an untouchable. He even struggled to find a place to live. Why? he asked. Later, Bhim began to teach in college. Even though he was a brilliant teacher and the students loved him, the other teachers refused to share their jug of water with him. Bhim was not silent. He started a weekly magazine in which he wrote about castes and its evils. In his country, everyone was not equal. The British who ruled India looked down upon Indians. And Indians looked down upon other Indians too. Many years had passed since the station master had walked away from the young boy. But not much had changed. Bhim was now highly educated. But that didn't make a difference to those who only looked at him as an untouchable. He was determined to do something about this. So he went to London to study law. It would help him bring justice to his people. When he came back, Bhim continued his fight. In his speeches and writings, he demanded equality for all castes. He now had thousands of followers who called him Baba Sahib with affection. One day, Baba Sahib led a peaceful march to the public tank in Mahar near Bombay, from which untouchable people had never been allowed to take water. He knelt down and drank water from it. Thousands followed his example and broke a rule that had been in place for thousands of years. By now, Baba Sahib was respected as a brilliant lawyer. He was the first person from his community to hold a PhD degree. When India became independent in 1947, he became the first law minister. Along with other experts, he wrote the laws of the land. And so, the boy who was forced to sit in a corner of his classroom picked up his pen to change the lives of millions in his country. The laws he helped frame make the constitution of India. Baba Sahib believed that through law he could give everyone in India, including the millions like him who were looked down upon as untouchables, an equal chance in life to eat and play, to study and work. It is a fight that continues even today. Thank you.